And we are ready for the last speaker today, Dui Juan, who is a uh, de developer evangelist for Cassandra. He is very passionate about the Cassandra projects. He organizes meetups, conferences. He is uh, consulting companies how to Im implement Cassandra, how to implement solutions where the data is really big. We talk about pentabytes of data. We talk about of few thousand, sometimes few, uh, few uh, hundred, uh, few ten, tens of thousands of servers running together to keep your data. So this is a... Five thousand uh, machines running uh, on Cassandra at Apple. So please welcome these guys who will talk about big data. Okay, thank you. So let's. Uh, up, 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 up. Okay, so welcome. Um, who knows about uh, Apache Cassandra here? Please raise your hand. Okay, a few of you, fine. Where is the. Oh. So um, on this talk, I will show you a new feature of Apache Cassandra, which is full text search. Okay. For a long time, people using Cassandra, they were frustrated because uh, we technical evangelists, we tell them, oh, uh, it is not possible to use full text search on Cassandra. You have to install a new search engine next to Cassandra. But now things are changing. So um, I am working for DataStax. Who is DataStax? You should know that Apache Cassandra is an open source project. It's free. It belongs to the Apache Foundation. DataStax is a commercial company. Uh, we contribute the most for Apache Cassandra because most of the committers are employees of, of DataStax. So what is the idea? The idea is to provide an enterprise version of Cassandra so you take the open source product, you add some extra feature, so, and it gives you the enterprise product. This is the business model, so it is very classical. SACI index. So I would like to start first with a demo, a live demo. So here I have in Cassandra um, some music albums. I don't, I'm not sure that it's big enough for people in the background, so Let's just zoom in. Is it okay for you? Oh, they have screen, so I can zoom out. Okay. So here I have in my uh, local Cassandra database, I have uh, 110,000 musical albums, okay? Uh, let's see some examples. So I just fetch 100 of them. So you have the artist name, you have the title, you have the country where the album has been released, and you have the year. Fine. Now I want to create some index on my album to be able to search. So first, I want to be able to search on the album title. Okay. So I am using the new index. I said that I have a standard analyzer with a stemming. Stop word, the local is English, and I want to normalize lowercase, so it is case insensitive search. I want also to be able to search the, the albums on the artist name, on the country, and also on the release year, so I create a lot of index. Now let's have some fun, so I would like Give me all the albums where title contains keyword love, released in USA between 1940 and 2010, okay? So let's see, okay. So love here, love, 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 and USA, okay? Now, um, because it is full text search, we can also have like a a syntax like percentage, 
percentage. What does it mean? It means that if you try to find all the titles which contain the word love, but not only love, lovers also. So let's see. Uh, let's see if I have some lovers here. Lover, where are you? Oh, Glovers, okay? Yeah, because the, the, what I want is any word that contains L-O-V-E. So it can be any combination because of the percentage syntax, okay? If you are familiar with uh, SQL database, it is very uh, familiar syntax, okay? Now we have something else. Let's say, uh, give me all the m album's title which contains dance and chair. Okay. Dance and chair, okay. Let's see. Click on play. Aha. Uh -huh. What we can see here is chairman dances. So it is not exactly dance, and it is not exactly chair. But how does it work? Because we said that we want stemming. Okay, stemming is true. It means that for every word, it, it will find the root of the word. So dance, dancing is the same thing. Chair, chairman is the same thing. Okay, so it means that if here I change my request to dancing, it still works. Okay it still give me the two answers. Because dance, dancing, they share the common roots, which is dance. Chair, chairman is the same thing, okay? So how it is working in Cassandra. So now let's see some internal details. So who created this? It is a contribution from engineer team at Apple. So one day they, they, uh, they developed this uh, full text search index for their own internal usage. And they put it into production for one year. And then they contribute it back to the community, to the open source version. Okay. How is it implemented? Well, they redesigned this secondary index from scratch. They have uh, created their own data structure. And for the, who, who knows about uh, Solar or Elasticsearch here? Raise your hand, okay. So they are not using Apache Lucene. They are creating their own index structure. And the word SASE, it means SS Table Attached Secondary Index. Because the index structure is following the same life cycle as the original data files. What you should know is in Cassandra, the index are distributed. What does it mean? It means that, for example, here I have a cluster of eight machines, Cassandra machines, okay? Imagine that I have uh, an user table which contains the user name, first name, last name, country. And if I create in an index on the user country, so, well, the index will be a, a reverse table where, for example, on some machines, you, you can have like FR, which is France, is pointing some user, and another machine, you have also FR pointing some other user ID. It means that the index are distributed and they stay on the same machines as the original data, okay? How do we query data? For example, give me all Pupil from Bulgaria. Select star from users where countries equals Bulgaria, BG. So first, the coordinator, so one of the machines which received the select query, it will ask for data from one, machi one machine. Give me some Bulgarian people. Okay. It will return some data. Do I have enough? Because when you query data, you s sometimes people set a limit, like a limit 100, limit 1,000, because you don't want to fetch all, all of your database, right? So you put some limit. So if the limit is not rich yet, well, 
the coordinator will increase the concurrency factor. Now it will query two more machines. Fetch the data back. Do I have enough data? No. I increase the concurrency factor. So this is how it works in Cassandra. So the question is, why don't we query all the machines at the same time? Right? It will be faster. Well, because with Cassandra, you can have a cluster of 1,000 machines. And it is very expensive to query 1,000 machines at the same time. That is the reason why we have this kind of algorithm, to start querying a small number of machines until you have enough data. The consequence of this architecture is that if you are searching with non-restrictive filters, for example, you give me all Chinese people. Wow, you have like, wow, a lot of, a lot of results. So it will be very, very expensive because you are fetching a lot of data. Of course, if you, you, you put a limit, limit 100, it is fine, as long as you put a limit. But if you don't put a limit and your search criteria is not restrictive enough, it will be very slow because you are fetching a lot of data. Um, it is also very expensive if you have a one-to-one -one cardinality index. Uh, let's have an example. You put an index on an user email, right? So each user has one email. You say, give me the user where emails is jondo at gmail.com. So Cassandra, Cassandra will start querying data, okay? One node, two node, three node. And the problem with the email is that for one email value, how many users do you have? Maximum one, not two, because the, the email is unique for each user. It means that in the worst case, if you are not lucky, if you are not lucky, you, you, you will start querying A, B, C, D, E, F, G, J, and you will get the result only at the last round. So in a big cluster, you spend your time querying a lot of machines, okay? And the bigger the cluster size is, the more you have to pay for the network overhead because of this algorithm, okay? Any questions so far? Yes. No, but we don't want to. Oh, how do we solve the one-to-one? -one? Um, issue. There is a, um, a solution in Cassandra we call materialized view. So you c for if you know that your index is a one-to-one -one and you don't want to query the whole cluster, what you should do is to create a materialized view. It's like a create a table called user by email. So your data will be denormalized, duplicated. So every time you create a user with an email, Cassandra will denormalize this user data into another table, and then you can query by email. And it is very fast, because you only touch one machine and not the whole cluster. Oh, yes, question. Why should we use Cassandra instead of, for example, MySQL cluster or, for example, some other database that is supposed to scale, for example, the Amazon solutions and the others? Yeah. Oh, because uh, Cassandra is um, the very, very well known for high scalability. For example, uh, Netflix, everyone knows about Netflix here? Yeah. Well, they have like a cluster of 1,000 machines in Cassandra and Apple. So in 2014, they say they have 75,000 machines on Cassandra. And this year, I think they double. The number. Yeah, and what is the main point? Too much users or too much data? or Too or much what? data and also um, Cassandra can scale linearly very well and you have uh, lots of machines. And also we have like a um, multi-data center. So uh, with Cassandra you can have a data center in Europe and in America so that if you have users in America they will use this data center so to have data locality. So you don't you don't have to, um, your user do not have to cross the Atlantic Ocean to, to, to get the, the data. Okay. But if the data is in Europe, what happens? It will be cached uh, in no, the US? No, the data will be replicated 
in both of, in both data center and it is uh, it is done um, uh, by Cassandra itself so it is just configuration you don't have to install extra software Does because it throw f Facebook when they created Cassandra they they already implemented this uh, multi data center feature so this is one of the most robust multi data center uh, database right now do, do Facebook still use it yes I have received an offer for to be a Cassandra engineer in France recently. Uh, the life cycle. So how is it implemented um, technically? So when you are writing data to Cassandra, insert into uh, blah blah blah. For example, when you are creating a, a user, your data will first go to commit lock. Okay, so it is a flat file on disk. Uh, the idea is to not to lose data. We put first the data on disk, and then in memory. And after that, we say, OK, it is written. Right? Because if we don't put the data on commit log first, and we only put data in memory, someone can just uh, reboot your, your machine, and you will lose data. Right? So first commit log, then in memory. And as soon as the data is written in memory, in a mem table, so memory table, uh, SASE will create an index structure for this mem table, OK? So here, uh, if you are interested, you can look on Google. So if you have a text data, text content with a prefix search, it will create a concurrent Redis tree from Guava, the library. If you have a text structure with the contains predicate, so which allow you to use this like percentage percentage uh, search, it will use concurrent suffix tree from Guava library. And for the, all the all, all the data, data types, so for example, for, for uh, uh, integer, for date, timestamp, it will use concurrent skip list set from the JDK. Okay. So it is for the in-memory data structure. Now, after some time, the data in memory will be flushed to disk. Okay. And then, the same thing. SASE will create data structure on disk for searching. Okay. And when you have compaction in Cassandra, so what is compaction, for example, sometimes we, we create a um, data file on disk, and the number of data file will grow over time because you are updating, creating new data. And then the number of files is too big, like, for example, 100 files. So Cassandra will just merge them together. That's what we call compaction. And when you are doing compaction, merging of the data file, the index structure is also merged at the same time. So how does it work on disk? For example, I have an index on the user country. So for each index record, there is a pointer to the offset of the original data in the base data file, OK? So this is an offset from the beginning of the file. So it is very fast, because when you have the offset in bytes, you can skip a lot of data and to, to go directly to the original data to read for, OK? And those data structure are just B plus 3, which are modified to store the offset. So there is no magic, very, very uh, common data structure. Questions so far? No. Let's move on. Query Planner. So this is very nice. Uh, they implement it. So if you are using like uh, Oracle or MySQL or um, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server, you know that um, in, um, they have a Query Planner to optimize your request. So Apple Engineer, they also created a Query Planner for, for this index. So how does it work? For example, you have this query, OK? Give me all people uh, where the first name start with P, but not PA, and where the age is less than 100 and more than 21 years old, OK? So it will create a graph, a graph of a tree of uh, operations, N and O. And then the, qu the query planner will kick in to optimize. For example, this N close, OK? Because the end relationship is commutative and associative, we can merge them together. So you have here, 
where first names start with P and not PA, and H is greater than 21 years old. This one, we have an exclusion. For example, I want all people where first names start with P, but not PA. So how can we optimize this? Well, it is very simple. For SASE, it will start by scanning all people whose first names start with P, and then it will perform an exclusion. P, but not PA. So they, it merged the two operations together. And last but not least, also we have a lot of N clause here on the H. It can be merged into one predicate on the H, okay? Question? Pretty, very, it's very straightforward. There is no magic, really. Conclusion. Is it available? Yes, in Cassandra 3.4, but wait at least for 3.5 because there are some critical bugs. I have used it because before talking about a new technology, I want to test this for myself. So I use it, I test it on a huge cluster with uh, three billions of rows, and I found some critical bugs, so they have been fixed. Why do ha they have bugs? Because when they created this index at Apple, it was in Cassandra version 2.0, and then they, they ported the source code to 3.0. So as you know, there is a, um, a major version gap, and then uh, the source code has changed a lot, and that's why they introduced bug when they port the code. Okay. And now it has been fixed, so you can use Cassandra 3.5. For the future, what they want to implement also is collection, um, index on collection. You, you will be able to index your data in list, set, and map, because Cassandra, with Cassandra, when you create a table, you can have a list, and a set, and a map as a data structure. They want to implement the OR clause, the different operator, and people always ask me, so what's the difference with uh, this full text search index compared to a, a real search engine like uh, Apache Solar or Elasticsearch? You must know that Cassandra is not a search engine. It is a database. So this is just a search feature on top of a database. But Cassandra is not a search engine. And it is always slower using this compared to Elasticsearch or Solar. Why? Because you have to read. First, you have to read the index, and then you, you have to read back the original data. So you are reading on disk two times. Okay? There is no scoring. There is no ordering. There is no order by. There is no group by. Okay? So the, the, those are the limitations. But if you don't need ordering or grouping, then it's fine. It, you will be happy with this. Thank you. I have uh, 30 seconds left to take questions, if any. No? Fine. Thank you. <laughs>